did it now before I forget. All right, so it's recording now. Uh, yeah, we're, I think we're going to have light attendance because Hannes is, uh, he was sick all week last week and he said, he said he's still feeling a bit under the weather. And then, um, yeah, and George is on his way to a JavaScript conference, I think, up in Amsterdam. Uh, so we'll just get started. Uh, I think you may have seen the slides, but let me put that on chat. Uh, and if uh, people can help with notes too, that would be appreciated. And let me pipe the note to, uh, uh, type in a link to the notes. Cool, so uh, we'll just get started. Uh, so we have a pretty uh, light agenda, I think, but uh, we'll see how we do. Just typing, typing the notes of people that are here. All right, so here's the agenda. So. Basically, five main topics. Uh, the hackathon actually uh, actually kicked off. I mean, there are actually a couple of MRs that are already coming in from Japan. Uh, so people in APAC regions already gotten started. Uh, hopefully, uh, uh, we'll have people joining from Japan as well. But there are a couple of MRs that are coming already. Uh, the, I think we'll have a brief discussion on the core team page. This is uh, there's an MR that's uh, that George has started. That I don't know if people are commenting on it yet. I uh, left a couple of feedback in there. Uh, and Winnie, uh, Vinny's not here, but he started a discussion or opened the issue on collecting feedback from first-time contributors, which I thought was a good idea. Uh, so we can talk around some mechanics about that and IT resources discussion. Um, one is on Slack access for core team members, and uh, I think Jacopo and others and commented on this too, the issue with contributors at GitLab.com. Uh, those are the sort of the main topics, and I had a quick discussion about um, time change in March, which is one of my favorite topics of the year. But uh, anything else that uh, people want to cover, or does this agenda look okay to everyone? Looks good. All right, cool. Uh, we'll move on. Uh, so, quick uh, discussion in the hackathon. So, hackathon. Uh, we'll have a kickoff session in about uh, fifty-five minutes that David and I are going to lead. I mean, obviously, you all are welcome to to join. Uh, but it's like I noted that things have already kicked kicked off uh, for the hackathon, and the a uh, couple of new things. Um, uh, that I want to point out on the hackathon for for the tutorial sessions. What I did this time around was invite uh, invited several uh, product managers. Uh, I hope I remember all of them correctly. From manage, uh, verify, uh, create, and configure. Uh, so they'll give a um, basically a, a brief tutorial on on different product product groups, which I don't think a lot of the community members are necessarily familiar with, and they'll also talk about some of the issues they want to highlight and ask for community members' help. Uh, so in that spirit, uh, what we created this time around was, um, I mean, obviously we want the, the volume of MRs that have come in uh, in the past hackathons, but we also wanted to encourage community members to work on some of the issues that are important for uh, different product teams. Uh, so most of them identify like one issue that we want to encourage people to work on and there's extra prize for working on those issues. Um, we'll see, I mean, how that goes. I mean, some of them, uh, it's possible that some of them might be too complicated to finish in, in, in about a 10 days, um, but uh, we'll see how they progress. But I think we identified like eight issues that we want to encourage uh, community members to work on and a couple of them I've, uh, and some of the community members already volunteered to work on them. I mean one of them was the documentation on charts and there was another one I can't remember. Uh, it might have been one of the verify issues uh, that we have on the hackathon page that somebody volunteered for. Um, so hopefully we'll have um, uh, the rest of them taken up by other volunteers but those are some of the new things for the for the um, for this edition of Hackathon. Um, just wanted to share some numbers uh, uh, 
from previous hackathons uh, from the, the Q3 event to Q4, uh, the number of MRs that have come in had almost like tripled from the first event to the next, which is uh, phenomenal. I mean, I'm not quite sure we'll get that kind of a growth, but that's sort of the, um, uh, I was really happy to see the awareness of, of the event. So hopefully we'll see a continued growth in terms of MRs that are getting submitted. And the red uh, bar graph basically shows you um, uh, for the grand, grand prize winner, how many MRs were merged. So it went from like seven to 13, uh, but just wanted to give people an idea of uh, uh, the type of MRs uh, uh, that got uh, uh, Georgia grand prize both time around. But that's sort of uh, a background. Not sure if people have any questions or David, you want to add anything there? But Okay, we're good. Uh, all right, so moving quickly along on the core team uh, layout update that, uh, I mean, George has put a lot of work into the MR. Uh, so if you haven't done this yet, I encourage you to take a look at the current iteration. I thought some of the text improvements that he made were really good as well, uh, in addition to the layout. So I encourage people to um, uh, comment on him or, or, or or submit a suggestion on on the MR. Uh, we think it's. Um, I think there are a couple of things that that uh, a couple of questions that George had for for our web team, uh, and I think Yarek's been responding to them. But uh, um, please let George know. Uh, hopefully, like in the next couple of weeks, if if there's anything else that needs to be done, I I think it's in pretty good shape. Uh, and then I don't think. Uh, I think most of you added an entry to the team page. I mean, not to put you on the spot. I, I don't know. I can't remember Vitaly if you've done this or not. But if you haven't, uh, if you can do that soon on on the uh, GitLab team page, that would be great. I'll, I'll try to follow up with people in the next couple of weeks if they're not done. Uh, so I think I'll leave it at that since George is not on the call, but not sure if people have any comments or questions. Okay. Uh, all right, uh, moving right along. Uh, so, I mean, Vinny's not here, but he created an issue. Uh, I think he had a collection of, I mean, he started a good collection of um, questions to uh, ask for some contributors. Uh, what their experience has been like. Uh, and I think, David, you added a couple of suggestions there, and, and I did as well. Um, but, uh, I mean, the rest of the folks on the call or, I mean, the rest of the core team members that are watching the recording, if you have any suggestions on other questions that need, that are good questions to ask, I would definitely encourage you to uh, add to the issue there. Um, I mean, just as a next step, I mean, what I was thinking was, uh, I mean, I'm sure like a lot of you know, like whenever there's a, I mean, for, I mean, I try to do on a monthly basis for people who had their first MRs merge, I, I try to reach out to them to thank them for their contributions. And uh, we've also been, you've probably seen this on Twitter, we've also been um, sending out uh, a camper mug, a GitLab branded camper. Uh, a camper mug with uh, with the hashtag that says uh, my first MR merge. Uh, so when I do that, I, I don't think it'll be too intr intrusive. Like we'll uh, we can include a like a link to a Google form for people to fill out a questionnaire. But just um, I mean that's just an idea that came to me uh, like uh, when I saw uh, Vinny's issue. Uh, I think it was last week. But not sure if people have any thoughts or quite, um, any other ideas on how to reach out to first-time contributors and get, get people's feedback. But. Yeah, I mean, I think a form, a form could, be, could be good. Um, yeah. I mean, we have quite a lot of questions on that, uh, on that issue. Um, mm -hmm. We might want to make sure that we put only the ones we think make sense, so not to overwhelm um, people. I think that uh, the more questions that we put in there, the yeah. harder for people to, to complete. Um, right. I'm I like I like the idea of a of a form perhaps right. something something short. Yeah, I think I count like seven questions. I think that's probably like we're yeah. I don't think I would want more than like eight or nine questions. I want to keep it like relatively short. 
Um, but I don't know, David, if you're thinking like even less numbers than like a seven or like. Yeah, I, 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 I don't think of a particular number right now. I just, right. um, I'd say let's keep it under under 10 at least. And let's, I mean, one thing that we can do is to look at the, the suggestions that we have right now, and some of them might be merged into one questions for question for right. instance. Right. Yeah, that's true. Like, yeah, it, it, I think it might be more obvious when we put these in some sort of a form, uh, like a Google form, and and see if some of these questions could be combined to make it simpler. But um, yeah, the other question I had was, do we leave these questions like open ended, or do we make this like have people, you know? Uh, put a score on it between like one to ten as an example, but I'm not sure if that's applicable for applicable to all questions. Um, I mean, obviously, for things like how long did it take you to set up a GDK? That's I mean, that's not a multiple choice. That's just uh, like uh, you know, it would be like three hours or whatever it is, right? But um, right. I mean, we, yeah. we could do a combination. I mean, if we yeah. put multiple choice, I mean, we can say like. Um, uh, 20 minutes, half an hour, more than half an hour. Right. And right. Then in any case, always leave a, um, um, a text field for people to um, optionally add Comment. uh, yep. comments. Right. Yeah. A well, Google form or um, um, I mean, the other the other good option that I've used in the past is SurveyMonkey. Um, right. And yeah, I think that, I mean, the reason why a lot of times I use SurveyMonkey was that like a Google forms i mean not just in china but in a lot of places like could be blocked it, it behind right. my corporate firewall yeah. but we can explore different options but i don't know if people like other folks on the call have ideas or thoughts but all right people are very quiet today i'm not sure if i'm putting everybody to sleep i hope not but no i think for me it's a good idea yeah Okay. okay. So you're just you just speaking very interesting. So we are just hearing. <laughs> okay. All right. I'll take that. So. All right. So yeah. I guess I'll just add a comment on the on the issue um, to to summarize what we talked about, like using a form, and then uh, and then we can kick off a. I mean, it's relatively simple to start a Google form or a Survey Monkey and and start a draft uh, survey that that we can send out. So, cool. Okay. Uh, trying to see if Ben has joined us or not, but it doesn't look like it. And thank you, David, for taking notes. I'm seeing that as as you type in type that in. Uh, so there are a couple of IT resource discussions that's been going on, um, both on multiple Slack channels and um, and issues as well. Um, so, I mean, just a bit of history. Uh, I mean, what we did uh, was to, I mean, this, this was decided back in August. Like, we wanted to give all core team members access to all of the Slack channels at GitLab. Uh, and, and things were fine uh, until uh, we, I mean, until Ben, I, ben uh, joined the core team and the, one of the, the, the points that were brought up was that Ben, you know, works for one of GitLab's customers. And then there are some concerns about, uh, there are like a private sales channels. Uh, I, I don't know if you've all peeked into it. Like if you go look at any channel that starts with a underscore, that's basically a, like a private sales channel for like a specific account. Uh, and there was a concern as to whether it's, um, that would be okay to leave uh, leave it open publicly. Um, so there's a there's an issue there that I mean I won't get into. It's the discussion's gotten uh, a bit long, and I think both Ben and uh, Hannes like chimed in as well with suggestions of how to get around it. So it looks like, based on the last interaction from our infrastructure team, they might be able to implement something in the next couple of weeks. Um, so I and I think I'll create a merge requests to update the handbook as well. There was a tool, like a tools and tips page with the section on Slack. Um, basically, I mean, my main point, I haven't thought about the exact text yet, but what I'll suggest is that 
um, I mean, all the private channels should start with A underscore. And I mean, that should just, uh, I mean, I, so the core team members, I don't think will be allowed back into those channels. I, you know, I don't think that's a big issue. Like, I don't think, I mean, even I didn't know about those channels until a couple of months ago until I got invited uh, to a customer discussion. Um, so I don't think that's a big loss for the core team. Uh, but the other thing uh, that I'm going to ask the GitLab team members to do is that in the public channels, like do not discuss, discuss any private like customer information. Uh, I don't think that'll be that hard. Uh, but there was uh, basically concern about that from uh, from a couple of people from from GitLab. So I'll I'll create a merge request to update the handbook in the next few days, uh, and hopefully you know we can. Uh, I mean, poor Ben, he hasn't been able to get access to or or any of our GitLab ac like Slack channels in the in the past couple of months. But hopefully that will be resolved. Uh, if this takes too long, my per interim solution was to just give Ben access to like seven to 10 like channels that are, that most most of the core team members are using, like things like, you know, release post, uh, obviously like contribute and core team channel. Um, but hopefully this will get resolved soon, but that's sort of where things are. It's, it's taken a lot longer than, than I anticipated this to, this to come to a conclusion, but hopefully we'll get it resolved soon. But that's sort of where, where things stand. Cool. Uh, I'd like to, to ask about yeah. this uh, issue. I I don't understand uh, completely what's the difference between uh, core team members and <clears throat> employees. I mean, both uh, signed uh, NDA paper, and yeah. is it enough to uh, is it enough uh, for uh, opening uh, all Slack channels for them? Because if we're talking about uh, about uh, leaking information, and it it uh, uh, it may be it may be leaked from anybody. Uh, I mean, both employers and uh, core team members. So, what's right. the difference? Why employees yeah. have access there, and core team members don't have access? Right. I mean, not those channels uh, with a. Uh, prefixes. Uh, I mean the the ability to join any Slack channel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean I think the sensitivity. That's something that we just didn't think about back in August uh, when we just said, okay, we're going to give everyone like whether core team members or um, employees access to all the Slack channels. We just didn't think about like a. I mean this was definitely a corner case when what if a core team member uh, also happens to work for one of our customers, right? Because it's possible that, I mean, you know, I don't know if it exists. There could be a competitor company uh, uh, channel under A underscore uh, to to the company that Ben works for, and there, there's there's a sensitive discussions about a deal uh, that's happening, and it's probably not appropriate uh, for you know for him to have access to that information, like regarding any deals or you know sales figures or any of that like a sensitive topic. Uh, so that was just brought up recently, uh, and that's you know obviously something we didn't think about back in August, but that's where uh, you know the concern is coming from. But I mean, Vitaly, I'm, I'm not sure if the if I answered your question or not. But so no. I'm not sure I understood everything you said. But <laughs> yeah. So Vitaly, I think the main yeah. the main difference here is is rather. Uh, it's it's less the, the distinction between a core team member and a mem uh, and uh, a team member from the company is more the distinction the distinction whether um, the core team member works for a particular company. So let's say um, you work for company A and company A is a is a customer at GitLab. Um, so if there are internal conversations within GitLab uh, about uh, a deal that we're trying to uh, to do with that company. We wouldn't want the employer to to know uh, to know about this, and then also if they are um, if company A has a competitor, company B, uh, and then uh, we would uh, we would want the team member from company A to know about the deals that we're doing with company B. Um, um, yeah, I got it. But uh, employees have uh, their friends that could work on company A. 
and they can they can speak with their friends and the information would be leaked yeah but i think that's less uh, that's um that's less of a risk i would say than someone working directly from a particular company and um uh like going into one of those channels i would say i mean that's one just my 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 opinion though but uh, i mean i can see i can see that case but i think there's less of a chance um of this happening rather than um um yeah being someone from uh, from a particular company and then learning about uh, the uh, i think in any case it would be it would be corner cases because we um we go with um assuming best intentions but still i think some of the deals that we do with some with some companies there are uh, there are particular clauses that say that um that, yeah uh, competitors should not know about uh about uh, the deals and then if that company learns that there's someone from a competitive company that can see their channels then um, then customers are not really happy about this yeah yeah i mean vitali your, your point's valid i mean i i work in silicon valley where it's not unusual to have like neighbor across the street that's working for your competitor right and then but i mean this is all i mean this is uh trying to mitigate like potential risk um so i mean there's I mean, there's there's nothing we can do to reduce all the risk. So that's just not possible. But uh, we're trying to do as much as we can to mitigate any potential potential risk or conflict of interest. So, um, uh, Ray, one question though: um, yeah. Do employees need uh, invitation to enter those uh, A underscore? No, I don't okay. think I don't think you do. Uh, okay. But. Uh, so, so with the, the compromise that we're discussing is that I mean, employees have access to all the A channels. I mean, I didn't actually didn't know about it until I got invited. Uh, but I mean, you can find them. Like you can go, like, just I mean, everybody can do that now. Like all the all the core team members too. You can just type A underscore and like search for uh, whatever channel that you think might exist. Uh, so, so the proposal is like all the private conversations will, will happen under a underscore channel. And I think this might, I mean, I'm not hundred percent sure this might be extended to other like non employees like GitLab as well. Cause we also have other external people that have access to our Slack channels, like advisors and so forth. But so, I mean, that will be discussed through the MR, but I, my impression is that all the, uh, external audience will be excluded from like a private channels, but I'll, I'll try to make that clear in the MR. So it's not just, we're, we're not just like, you know, quote unquote targeting or just zeroing in on the core team members. No. Yeah, but Vitaly, feel free to uh, add your concerns on the merge request yeah, as well. Please. We're discussing yeah. it in any case. It's now just makes sense. Uh, I have to collect my thoughts and mm -hmm. I'll type it later. Cool. cool. Okay. Uh, any other thoughts or questions? Um, uh, I think it'd be great if uh, to see. I mean, seeing how that works, it might be great. I mean, that's a bigger topic. That's a topic for a separate conversation. Right. But uh, I'm wondering if that work um, could help us as well, opening up some of the channels as well to the public, uh, not just core team members and uh, GitHub employees at some point. Yeah, I mean there were even discussions. I mean, Remy, you may have, you may have been in. I mean, you may be aware of some of these discussions. But I think like there was even discussion about creating a. I mean, it, it costs a lot of money creating a separate Slack instance so that that's completely open to the public. Um, but I mean, I mean, that, I think that just involves a, like, I mean, a lot of budget in order to do that. Like having like one just internal Slack instance and a, and a public one, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, yeah, uh, I, yeah. Um, but yeah, I think to, um, uh, go back to Vitali's point, I think, mm -hmm. uh, this point is very valid uh, right. in, in the sense that we all sign an NDA to not right. leak information. Right. So um, I think we should, if, if, if we don't trust the NDA, then 
which can probably sign an NDA. No, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, that's a point. Right. Uh, right. I think no, I mean, point. yeah, thanks, thanks for adding your notes there, uh, Remy. But yeah, I mean, I think that's a valid question to ask in, in the MR, and I would have like a legal folks weigh in there. Um, yeah, I mean, if, if, yeah. We ca if we can avoid like uh, having to, to block these channels by having uh, someone from the legal department say, hey, the NDA is covering that, so there's mm -hmm. no need. Maybe that's just simpler. I don't know. Right. Okay, yep, point. All right, so moving to uh, the next topic, and, and I think, Jacopo, you, you chimed in on this issue as well regarding contributors.gitlab.com. I didn't realize it wasn't being updated. I thought it wasn't being updated for the last couple of weeks, but it's not since like 11.3. That's like several months ago. But uh, Jacopo, do you want to like a, talk about this or? Yeah, it's mostly just an add-up and stuff because uh, basically we find out that uh, contributors.gitlab.com is frozen since mm -hmm. quite a few months now. And this is due to an infrastructure issue that will be fixed hopefully soon. Uh, right. And there's also another discussion uh, going on, uh, which is basically the idea of moving the contributors.gitlab.com to our contribution graph uh, feature. So that's both, both things uh, moving, both, both concepts. Uh, and yeah, well, personally, I. I used a lot that website, uh, contributors.gita.com, and it's also open to the public and it's quite, has quite few links around to the, <laughs> that site. So uh, I think it's quite important to update, to fix the issue as up at least, uh, because I feel that other contributors also use it. And if you don't see your name going up or down, whatever, might be an issue. For, for our, for our community. Yeah. Yeah, I actually got pinged by somebody who had their first MR merge. I mean, the first place the, the person check was his page and they said, why isn't my name showing up? And I told them it's, it's been, it's hasn't been updated on a regular basis and actually sent that person to the Viterja dashboard. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think people do do look at them and then, because um, I mean, that's sort of, I mean, they want to see their name on there. Even if, if they have to scroll all the way to, to the bottom, they want to see their stats, right? So they- yeah, Exactly. Yeah. And also I think it's more, more um, I mean, uh, it's like a race contributor website. People go there and I feel like uh, as more page view, the, the, the contributors website rather than Vitergia or others. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's quite important, I think, to make, it, make, make sure it's up to date, at least. Uh, yeah. I don't know what you guys think. But. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I think I made a point, one comment on the issue that if it's, if it's you know, not being regularly updated, we should at least put an error message at the top that's saying this hasn't been updated since whatever date, so that at least people know and they're not misled. But uh, but it doesn't sound like we have we we. I mean, we could potentially point them to the Baturja dashboard for now, uh, for lack of other alternatives. But um, you could add the link, perhaps, but yeah. uh, not. I I wouldn't shut down the website because uh, it has a different set of features and so on. And it's very similar to the uh, other open source projects, uh, websites. So I find the, the UI quite intuitive and simple. So I think it's quite good overall. Yeah. Um, I wonder if, I mean, I'm just rereading the, the issue. I mean, one of the comments is that, uh, I mean, the main point of the issue here is to uh, essentially, uh, move the functionality of contributors.gitlab.com to uh, to GitLab itself, which uh, seems to be uh, a big uh, a big project. Uh, but I mean, in the meantime, I wonder what we could do as uh, like the 
um, minimum uh, steps to to correct to correct this. I mean, one thing could be uh, uh, yes, uh, add add the message on contributors.github.com as uh, Ray is saying, but um, I might be wrong on this, but I don't think there's an issue to actually make sure that the, um, the contributors uh, page uh, is kept up to date. I mean, is this something that would be a lot of uh, a lot of work? If it's not, and then I would say let's make sure that it keeps uh, up to date unless we have a better solution. From what I've seen, there is uh, an infrastructure issue related to, to that. Mm. And um, the, soft, the coding work has been done already. It's mostly an uh, infrastructure work to be done. Okay. From what I know. Um, do you know if it's linked on that uh, on that issue that we are looking at? Uh, I don't remember. Uh, I think it's mentioned there. Like, I mean, maybe I'm wrong. Let's go to the issue. Right. Either Mattia or somebody. No, not that one. Sorry. Yeah, there's a yeah. I got it. Um, migrate contributors. I'm gonna add it to my notes. Yeah. There, perhaps. Uh, I saw the link there. Okay. Is it this one or migrate? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one, I think. Yeah. That's the migrating to a different hardware. It looks like, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't have a. timeline I don't think but yeah so Ray perhaps the action here is to talk uh, to the infrastructure team to yeah. see if this can be uh, put back on um, on the schedule yeah Okay. Well, thanks for that. I, I think the original issue is like several months old, if I'm not mistaken. It's pretty old, like hasn't been really addressed for, for a while. But yeah, I think it's just a matter of contacting the infrastructure team yeah. and finding out whether it can be put on the schedule. Right. Um, okay. Cool. All right, so, all right, yeah, thanks for adding the relevant links there on the slides. Okay, I think uh, we have one last slide. Um, so any other topics? So it's my favorite time of the year when, when the daylight savings or the summertime starts in in North America and Europe. Um, I mean, it's it's annoying enough that the time has to change, that they change the time in a different week in, in, in the US and Europe, so it makes it really fun. Um, so, I mean, we don't have to spend a whole lot of time here. If we keep the current meeting time that we have, uh, so, you know, where I am and where Ben is, it, it'll still be 11 o'clock at, at night, which which is okay with, with both of us, but, um, I think uh, like where you are, Vitali, the meeting will be at five. I, I assume that would be okay. But I think the bigger problem is people in, in, in CET, in Central European time, you have to get up really early in the morning uh, uh, for, for one meeting in March. Uh, I think this will go back to eight in the morning starting in April, but um, not sure what to really do about the meeting in March. Do we just keep it at the same time? and uh, just make sure that people in Central European time have plenty of coffee or... Um, yeah, that's fine. Not just for me, that's fine. You're okay, Remy? Like, yeah. Uh, what about you, Jacopo and, and David? Like, We can deal with it. Yeah, just one, for <laughs> yeah, one month. I mean, yeah. okay. don't, don't, don't mind me. I'm, I'm not part of the core team, but I'm happy to, more than happy to start at seven, no worries. Okay, all right, cool. So we'll just keep, keep the meeting time uh, for 
for for March for now, and I think April it'll it'll be it'll be sort of back to normal. Uh, I don't know, but in in the, in Russia, Vitaly, you you guys don't do summertime, right? Is that correct? Like you guys keep the same time throughout the year. I think 5 p.m. is good enough for me, and I okay. don't sleep in that time. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'll. Yeah. I'll. Yeah. I'll have to inquire inquire about Japan. Like, hopefully, like it's middle of the afternoon. Hopefully, it'll be okay. Uh, but uh, um, so hopefully, we won't have to. Like, I mean, there, there unfortunately isn't a really good option if you want to just keep like a one uh, meeting slot each month. But um, so it looks like March will be okay, but we'll see how it goes with April and beyond. No. Okay, I think that's, yeah, that's the last slide. So that's all the topics I had, like anything else that people want to cover? We have about seven minutes left. But if not, we can end early and uh, I'm not sure how many of you will join me and David on the kickoff call in about uh, 20 minutes, but uh, hopefully see uh, you guys either on Gitter or one of the calls during the hackathon. So, all right, thanks, Thank thanks for your time, everybody. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Ray. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.